being a good player, being a good person, and just working our tails off. Like, that's the you know, Oklahoma State baseball. That's what they've always done. I wanted to pass that along, keep that going. Welcome in another episode of the Pokes for Life podcast, highlighting our pro pokes throughout the 2024 season. We're joined here in the studio, Orange Power Studios, with a man who rakes, not in the yard, but at the field, Jake Thompson. Welcome on to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Big offensive bat for the Cowboys for um, the COVID year, 2021-2022. You kind of had a unique route to Stillwater. You start off uh, South Dakota State. Kind of uh, give us a brief uh, breakdown of your route to Stillwater. I mean, uh, four schools, four years. It's pretty tough. How many credits did you lose in the process as well? <laughs> yeah, yeah. took a lot of classes. I've taken just about all of college, it seems like. Uh, but yeah, How many degrees is that? Uh, well, I got one degree, but I got three minors. Oh. So it was good. Took a lot of classes, but yeah, yeah it was fun. Loved it. And uh, I started at South Dakota State. Uh, you know, that was close to home. I was kind of a, a smaller guy in high school. Didn't mature as early as some people. Um, so started off there and then was out in California doing summer ball and knew I was kind of, you know, wanted to do the JUCO route and left South Dakota State and was just playing out there. Figured I'd go to a junior college kind of close to home. There's a bunch of them in Iowa and ended up staying out there, was seen out there by a, by a place and Stayed out there, loved that. Um, I was really fortunate that uh, my host family from Summer Ball lived near that college, and I was out there with them, staying with them for the summer, and they kind of said, yeah, you know, if, if you plan on doing that, you know, we'd love to have you for the year. Um, and they love baseball, and their kids love baseball, so that was fun. Yeah, I got to, got to stay with them, and I, I love that. I'm, I'm very grateful for them. If they did that for me, I probably wouldn't have been able to, to afford that out there. Um, but, yeah, so I was out there and then went to Kentucky, and then I uh, was fortunate to have three years here. Let's kind of break down your route to Stillwater. You're at Kentucky, um, and I, I'll, I'll give you a little more information here just because I was just coming on to the staff at that point. You know, we, we bring you in on an official visit in August. I, I think you entered the portal, what, August 3rd or 4th, and school started on, what, the 15th or the 16th. Kind of uh, what was what was going through your mind on that side of uh, in that time of your life? Yeah, that was that was crazy. Um, <laughs> I was in the Northwoods League all summer. Uh, had a really good really good year up there in the summer there, and uh, I think the portal became a thing that August first, and then uh, that kind of hit, and I was like, okay, yeah, I think I'm gonna do it. So then I hit the portal, and coaches kept calling, and it was crazy. Within 20 minutes of being in it. I was getting calls, and I was like, okay, probably only got, you know, four or five days to kind of make a decision, um, and had actually played against Oklahoma State my freshman year when I was at South Dakota State, and was like, gosh, that was, you know, that was fun playing here, and, you know, you kind of felt the grittiness that Oklahoma State has, and, you know, just a good program with, with good kids and, and all that, so I was thinking, and all of a sudden, you know, they called, and I was like, wow, that was such a, a fun trip for me as a freshman at South Dakota State you know, getting to go there and being like, wow, like, I'm at Oklahoma State playing against them right now. You know, that was pretty <laughs> pretty incredible to play against them. And I was like, it'd be awesome to be there. And it didn't really work out to have time to, to visit. Um, so over the phone, just after a couple of days being in the portal, uh, you know, I knew I wanted to go there as soon as they called and, you know, did that. And then, yeah, I got down here, I think, three or four days before class started. And that was, that was something. Got down and kind of saw campus and everything. And had a couple of days to, to get enrolled and everything. We got it all done and was, you know, couldn't have made a better choice. I, I love my time here. Yeah. So your first year, COVID year, um, we get about 16 games in. And obviously, we, we know the story with the pandemic. 2021 rolls around. Uh, we had Max on in the last episode, teammates with him. You guys had a really good team there, had Justin Campbell. Um, Max, obviously, uh, Christian Encarnacion. Uh, a lot of guys that kind of went on to play professionally. Uh, what was kind of the culture of that team? Uh, well, it was it was kind of weird because, you know, the COVID was still kind of going, so you had to be careful. And, you know, we weren't all able to be in the locker room at the same time and, you know, having masks on in the dugout and stuff like that. Um, so it was kind of, like, weird that way. Um, but there was, you know, so many great guys, especially after being there that COVID year and then 
we had so many guys back. You know, all the seniors were able to, to stay. It was only a five-round draft and everything. So really got close with a lot of those guys, you know, like Cabanus and, and McCusker and Max. And because I was there a year, you know, they were kind of supposed to be gone, and I was kind of supposed to be into my senior year, but was granted another one, and that ended up being my junior year. But kind of got an extra year with those guys that were my age and, and that. So that was fun. Um, but, yeah, we had, a, you know, we had a loaded team that year. Um, it was fun. And those following squads were, were something. That was a very talented team, especially after the five-round draft. You know, everybody was, was still there. Um, and the next year, too, kind of backed up things. And college baseball got really, really loaded those two years, three years. You know, probably this year is probably the first year that guys aren't in their fifth year now. There's um, still a few guys trucking, ar- trucking around. Ryan Bogus, okay, Ryan yeah. Taylor. You yeah. know, I think those are the two guys that are on this year's team. Yeah. That, that were was the, the, the last, last ones that were at LEP. Yep. So all these new guys don't know what you guys grinded through over there. Yeah. Uh, but that was fun though. I loved it. Yeah. That. Good good times in the LEP clubhouse. You never knew uh, when you t- walked in that door if Trevor Boone was going to throw a football at your face yeah. or Colin Simpson was throwing stuff around. Or Okay. So 2022, um, that team was pretty loaded as well. You guys host the regional here. Um, before we kind of get into that, you, you played the last year at LEP. You played in over eight. Um, what was it like uh, going from LEP Reynolds Stadium to over eight as a player? Uh, well, the playing surfaces at both are, <laughs> are perfect. They do such a good job. Shout out to Todd. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, I mean, the surfaces have been great at both. But, you know, there's nothing like over eight. That's, uh, that's something. It was pretty awesome getting to play that first game there. Uh, all the fans, you know, every game, it seems like it was almost full. Uh, and there were a couple of games, I think, over 8,000 against OU. The one game was was nuts. Um, but, yeah, I mean, even now just walking in there and, and all the time, it's just like, wow, how blessed are we to have that, you know, in the cages and the training room, that locker room was was awesome, and the ping pong table, everything about it. You know, it doesn't it doesn't really get any better than uh, the way they constructed O'Bright. Um, but, yeah, playing those first, first couple of games there was – it's pretty awesome. I don't know. That feeling is, is pretty sweet. Yeah. So uh, 2022, um, that was our first full year, full capacity. Obviously, the first year, we got 25% up until uh, President Bush came along, and uh, we got to open the stadium the right way that way. Um, you guys host the regional that year. You're in the middle of a lineup with uh, Noel McLean, Griffin Dorshing, obviously yourself. Uh, you guys were some fear hitters there. Um, how did you guys kind of handle yourselves uh, going into games, stuff like that? Um, and kind of what was the culture like being the older guy on the team there? Oh, yeah, I mean, it, it was good. Uh, being in my third year at OSU, you know, um, I came in with, you know, Campbell was a freshman. I was in my fourth year already. I got six years of college. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, Campbell was there. You know, he was a leader too. Um, Bryce you know, a lot of guys from that class stayed, and I was kind of with them for three years. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was good. Uh, we got a lot of transfers that year, too, with Dorshing and Medeiros and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, we had a great team. And, yeah, being the older guy, was it was kind of fun, um, you know, especially with all the freshmen, getting to talk to them and, you know, trying to make sure that they're doing things the right way, you know, and wanting them to, you know, be the best that they can be, too. You know, I was six years older than some of the freshmen coming in, and it's like, all right, you know, I've had six years, and I wanted them to, you know, grasp it as early as they can, where it took me a couple to, to kind of figure it out, you know. Um, so that was good to, to do that, and, you know, I don't know. It was it was such a fun time. That was, like, a great year. So you talk about the mentorship to the younger players. What, what were you kind of uh, trying to mentor there? Were there certain traits, uh, kind of mantras that were embraced within the program when you – came here that you guys were trying to push on. Um, kind of elaborate a little on that. I mean, just how lucky we have it, you know, to have O'Bright and to have the coaching staff that we had was was awesome. I and mean, that was incredible. The knowledge that was being thrown out every day, you know, taking as much of it as you can and storing it and learning from it. And also, you know, there's a point where you overwork sometimes. You know, sometimes we come in late at night and there'd be guys hitting at 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock after we, you know, had already taken 100 swings that day. And it's like, all right, you know, I know that, you know, when I was young, I wanted to hit, you know, all day, every day. But it's like, you know, sometimes, you know, you develop bad habits doing too much. Sometimes, you know, you want to take your good swings. You know, you want your best swings. You don't want to lose what you gained that day. 
and just kind of teaching them, you know, work as hard as you can while you're here. You know, if you want extra, do extra. Extra is always good, but make sure you're doing it the right way. And, you know, just with the food and everything, you know, how lucky we had it at training table and all that. So, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was just fun. You know, I wasn't blessed to be at Oklahoma State my freshman year. I was younger. I had to put on some weight. I had to get better. And I wanted just to instill that work ethic that Oklahoma State has. It's just it's a place you come. When I, you know, being at South Dakota State, came here, and I was like, wow, they're all really good. They all work really hard. They're coached the right way. They're good people. Just how, how much I learned from that trip as a freshman <laughs> coming here. And I just kind of wanted to continue that, you know, keep passing that along, you know, being a good player, being a good person, and just working our tails off. Like, that's, you know, Oklahoma State baseball. That's what they've always done. I wanted to pass that along, keep that going. All right, 2022, um, you guys host the first regional at Obrate. Uh, a very offensive-powered uh, regional. Uh, you guys go game seven up and uh, ultimately fall to Arkansas. Um, but I think the most impressive thing, uh, being from afar at that point, and kind of watching in, uh, I remember you guys were in the elimination game. Tw- you're down 12 nothing to Missouri State. What's what's kind of the mindset in the dugout there? Because obviously uh, we all know <laughs> what happened there. That's a pretty impressive comeback to be, uh, down, tw- be down 12 and end up, I think, winning that game, what, 29 to yeah, it was whatever. Uh, so when you're in a big-time atmosphere like that, what was kind of the mindset in the dugout? How did you guys control your thoughts um, to kind of focus on the task at hand right there to get you to the next game against Arkansas? Yeah, well, we got it was 12 nothing. I think, was it the second inning? Yeah. And yeah. Um, I kind of went down to the dugout and, you know, kind of grabbed my, my best buddies and just kind of said, well, we got nothing to lose. You know, when you're down 12 nothing in the second inning, it's kind of looking like, you know, Things are kind of grim, um, but it's just kind of like, you know, hey, we got nothing to lose. You know, we're down 12 nothing. We might as well go out with a bang and see what we can do. And then it was just, I don't know, I've never seen anything like what we did that game. Um, that was, yeah, that was, that was fun. That was quite the comeback. And then we played again that night and had a similar game to that again. You know, it was just, it was, we didn't, you know, we had nothing to lose, especially when you get down that big that early. You know, might as well give it your all while you can. And, you know, if we come up short, we came up short, but. We were <laughs> fortunate that we uh, really put it down. All right. So your career uh, wraps up with that regional at OSU. Um, you you were kind of – Max and I le- elaborated on this a little bit. Um, you were kind of in the same boat as him. Uh, obviously, after COVID, the draft gets shortened. Uh, the five rounds of COVID, you're 20 rounds the second year after, and it stayed that. Uh, you were kind of a – I guess I wouldn't say byproduct uh, – of the shortening of the draft, you go undrafted free agent. What's kind of, uh, I asked Max the same question, what's kind of your thought process there? You know, you finish up here, you were a 345 career hitter, which that's an unbelievable, had over 1,000 OPS. Um, what's kind of your thought there? Because obviously, you know, you can play baseball at the highest level. Uh, what was your thought process of just kind of waiting for that phone call from the Marlins? Yeah, so uh, after our season wrapped up, you know, I was pretty <laughs> pretty sad, you know, just the fact that I couldn't wear Oklahoma State, you know, and play at O'Bray. That was that meant so much to me that I was able to do that for so long for the three years that I was was given with that extra year with COVID. Um, and I, I stayed in town and kept working out here just because I mean, there's no better place. And every time I've walked in and then walked out, I've always left the field better here, you know. So I loved it, and was I stayed here, kept working out, and you know I had a pretty good feeling that you know I had a good year, had a good Cape season before that, and then kind of right before the draft and the awards start coming out and got all American, and I was like okay, like I think think it's gonna happen, think I'm gonna get drafted. Was getting some calls kind of about it, you know what I was thinking and everything. Uh, then I went home right before the draft, my lease ended, and got home, was watching it, and you know first round happened, knew I wasn't gonna go then. I uh, was pumped when Campbell went. That was awesome. And then uh, that second day started getting some, some feedback, some, some calls and stuff, and kind of watched it and didn't see my name. And I was like, gosh, you know, that, that's when I thought I was going to go if I was. Um, and I, was, I got, got pretty down. I was kind of sad. And then the third day rolled around, didn't hear anything. Uh, was pretty sad. You know, I thought I'd given everything that I could, you know, to get drafted. 
didn't really know what was going to happen, but you know, I did know that I put my all into it. Uh, so then next morning comes around, right away in the morning. I'm up. I got up early because I was waiting. I was hoping you know something would happen, and right away uh, they called, and I was so pumped. They called, and they're like, yeah, you know. And I was like, yep, I'm in, basically. And he goes, well, let me check back. He called back, and then I was like, ooh, I better call coach and <laughs> make sure I'm doing the right thing here because I didn't really know anything about it. I was all going to work, and then, yeah, was, was ready to go right away, got on a plane the next day, and, and was down there. All right, so – First full season, this last season, uh, we'll break down your little stat line. You hit 280. Uh, you were in high, started off high A in, or low A in Beloit? Uh, I was in low A in the just a couple weeks after signing and then started in high A this year. Right. All right. So this last season, you go 280 to 886 OPS, 18 bombs, across two levels. Uh, you're named an organizational all-star at the end of the season. What was your first full season in professional baseball like? Uh, it was it was great. I loved it. I mean, there's nothing better than getting up, you know, waking up, having some breakfast, going to the field, and uh, getting to play every day. You know, feel kind of take that Oklahoma State attitude of you know getting better every day. You know, we work hard and all that, and then taking it there where you could show up to the field, get to lift, get your body right, and then you know get ground balls, get batting practice. I love it. There's nothing I'd rather be doing. And then after that, you get to play a game on top of that. You know, that's. <laughs> That's what I want to do every day, and, you know, I'm very fortunate that they gave me the opportunity to get to do that. All right. So um, first first year, like I just said, um, obviously you guys travel a lot, do a lot of that. Uh, what's kind of the your favorite spot? You obviously played the Pensacola this year. Uh, that was your home park. Pensacola, for those uh, listening, unbelievable setup right there on the water. What was the, the f- your favorite spot besides Pensacola you played at this year? Uh, well, Beloit was nice, too. I think they won uh, playing surface of the year or something, I think, the year before uh, the year before I got there. Um, so that was an awesome field, too. And Pensacola, yeah, that's <laughs> a pretty awesome setup. Um, I also really liked uh, we got to go to the Trash Pandas in Rocket City there. That was, that was a pretty awesome setup, good atmosphere. Um, got, to, got to see Vic and got to face Bryce, so that was really fun. Had a really good week there, too, so that makes it one of my favorites. How would you do against Bryce? That was good. Two for two with a walk. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> well, when we get Bryce on the show, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to ask him about that. So. Well, there was no way I was going <laughs> to let him get me out. <laughs> um, all right. N- another little side question. Favorite spread of the year? Ooh. Post-game spread. We had some good ones. Uh, I really liked Outback Day yeah. when we got Outback. That was always good. What's the go-to outback order for the Marlins organization? Ooh, well, there was always a couple of options too, so it was it was good. Nice. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, there was a little steak, that was a really good one. But yeah, I really love the outback and the bread too. Ooh, that was good. So you're working right now up here at Obrate. Um, you're about to head into your second full season, um, and you're kind of in the same boat as Max. You play kind of a, a variety of positions. You've played third base. You've played second base. You've played outfield. You obviously can hit. What's, um, what's something you're kind of working on right now as you head into spring training? Uh, defense. Um, yeah, I mean, I've kind of played all over but never really stuck at one spot. Um, so last year I played left, right, and first base. So really working on those, getting my arm going, um, especially playing in the outfield, you know, having that arm. And I hadn't – I only done it for one year here at OSU – um, but I kind of learned a lot last year with footwork and, and, you know, the glove work getting through it, and then also just getting that, that spin on the ball. It was nice. Last off season, kind of had Trevor and Roman in town too, so kind of learned from the pitchers how they get a little more spin on the ball, and that really helped me last year and just kind of keeping that going, doing a lot of shoulder-type stuff and, and trying to improve my, my throwing, my carry, and, and that, and then glove work at first base and also in the outfield too. You know, that's important. So, yeah, really working on the defense. And strength and conditioning, I feel like I'm probably the strongest I've ever been. And working in the training room, making sure my body's ready to go, uh, that's been awesome, really good. And, yeah, just getting ready to go. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, I'm pumped, and body feels, feels like it's, it's go time. So you wrap up the off season. Uh, you decide probably go home for a few weeks, decide to come down to Stillwater to get a little short-term rental. Um, you're driving into town. What's the first spot? That Jake Thompson's eating that in Stillwater. Ooh, I got I got cheese fries from 
from Eskimo Joe's. The sweet pepper bacon. Yeah, that, that's yeah. that's tough to turn down. That I've, is, I've had yeah. a few of those in my day. <laughs> so what what would this what would the second option be? Canes. I had canes before every road trip when I was here. I I loved canes. You know, with the chain, not going to a local yep. place. Interesting. Interesting. All right. So your f- your favorite um kind of I guess what's a favorite memory you had here uh wearing the orange and black? Uh, whether it was – it doesn't have to be a baseball deal. It could even be something kind of off the field. It could be on the field, team bus, charter, whatever, airport. Uh, what, what's kind of one of your favorite memories that kind of sticks out uh, amongst your time here? Man, honestly, every day was kind of my favorite day. It, it Somehow being here, every day topped the next. It was crazy, you know, practicing, uh, the games, everything. But I think kind of the challenge ahead of us every day, because, you know, we were trying to be champions. That's what, you know, every day was to work to be a champion. And you come in, and there's that challenge ahead of you. And like I kind of said earlier, every time I left the doors here, I felt better. Like, I got better as a player. And I just think that was was something that you can't – not everybody gets to do that. And I feel like everybody here conquered that challenge, got better, and we get to keep doing that every day. So (coughs) – yeah, I mean, you know, get to play the top competition in the country, too, with the Big 12. You know, every game was a challenge, and there's so many guys that I've played against that are already big leaguers that, you know, you say, well, I, you know, I played against that guy. You know, that was a challenge for us going in, how we're going to game plan against him. And then, you know, we didn't lose a lot here, too, which was fun, you know, getting to win. But yeah, I mean, I think <coughs> just the challenge of every day, getting through it, getting better, and then you go to the next day, it's like, wow, this was a great day. This was even better than yesterday. I got even better than I was the day before. So I think that – and then just the team bonding and, and, you know, that was something. The people that you meet, people that you get to play with. And, you know, I was here three years, so I met a lot of guys on this team. You know, guys are still here. And then I've been back here the last two off seasons, meeting each freshman class and each transfer, all the transfers and, you know, seeing them carry on, you know, what was taught to me when I got here that I tried to pass along is, is something that really sticks with you and that you like seeing. You touch on uh, the game planning against guys you play against, uh, and some of those guys are in the big leagues. Obviously, a few of your teammates, uh, Victor Medeiros, yeah. Christian Encarnacion, have made it to the big leagues. What's that been like uh, seeing guys that you suited up with here now playing on the sports highest level? That's awesome. I was pumped to see Vic, and it was awesome that he was you know, in Rocket City <coughs> when uh, when I was there. I got to talk to him right away. He's the first guy I saw when – Got there, dropped my stuff off, and then in the locker room, and then uh, went to the field just to see it. And as soon as I walked down the tunnel, Jay, you know, and he's my roommate here too. So yeah, that was that was sweet. And then got to face Bryce later that week, and I was looking forward to that. Awesome. Well, that's going to conclude today's episode. Uh, Jake, thank you for your time. Looking forward to seeing how this series kind of plays out. Um, we're excited to follow you, give you an update. Uh, we'll check in on you every once in a while. Uh, we wish you the best of luck as you prepare for the season. And uh, we'll see you back here soon in Stillwater. Thanks. Hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah. I'm heading to Jupiter next week, and I was wondering what the weather's going to be. Can, yeah. I get, can, I, can I get a weather report? No, I, I don't think there's any weather reports in me right now. Oh, man. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was in the area about a month ago, and it was, uh, was kind of cloudy. There was some rain down there. <laughs> okay, those were some of my favorite memories, too, yeah, we're seeing you, your weather you, reports. You caught me off guard there. I, okay. I wasn't expecting that one. All right. I bet it'll be probably sunny. It'll probably be humid, you know, so get ready for that. So, All right. Uh, Jake Thompson yeah, switching the roles up here as we conclude. Um, so we'll see you guys next time. Uh, this has been the Poster Life Podcast. Mm-hmm.